Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Stop it. See? This is what I'm saying. This thing's all going all haywire on me. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, get rid of some stuff here. Let me um, let me get this. Hold on. Th th this is, uh, there we go. Get rid of that, and we get rid of that. And then let's see here. Let's bring it back up. Are we okay? There, there, something went wrong with my, um, uh, with my, uh, I have this thing that plays the all the music, you know, the themes and stuff like that, and somehow it was not doing the right thing tonight. It was uh, it was playing stuff that didn't exist, you know. So I don't know. Anyway, we're here. What the hell? Um, I have no guest, nothing, uh, and uh, it just looks like I'm going to be talking with you for a little bit, uh, and then we'll go to the. Uh, We'll go to the um, panel, right? We'll go to the citizen panel, and uh, hopefully we can have a good show tonight. I am out of it again tonight. Um, I mentioned last night, let me, let me talk. I got to talk about this, okay? Let me just get it off my chest. Um, I, uh, I, I, uh, I talk, talked last night about this, this um, uh, possible cancer, prostate cancer that I have. Possible. We don't know. Um, my numbers jumped, okay? They went from a, they were at a 2.9, then they went to a 2.5, then they went to a 3.4. I have these things memorized up to a, a 4.5, uh, and then all of a sudden it jumped to a 6.7, and all of a sudden my doctor said, oh, we better have a prostate biopsy. Uh, and I don't know, you know, I just was really bothered by that, and I, 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 I just felt maybe that was going too, too fast, too far, because uh, I read a lot of stuff online that says that somebody my age um, shouldn't even be tested for his PSA, uh, let alone given a biopsy, and that uh, uh, doing the PSA at my age causes more problems than it helps and may lead to overdiagnosis and over uh, um, what can we call it? Over, over um, uh, doing it, and doing pr prostate biopsies and so on. So I, uh, I went, I went to my doctor yesterday because I had to get a pre-biopsy okay from him for my health because they're going to put me out for it, right? So uh, I, uh, I went to my doctor and I told him about this and my concerns, and he went, "What well, six, seven? He said, you know, that's still not high enough. I mean, he said, I, I don't know why he's doing the biopsy. And one of the reasons he's doing the biopsy is because of the jump, the velocity, I guess, in the, in the PSA. But this doctor, you know, I just, there's something about him that just didn't, I didn't trust. And I told my doctor this, and he, 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 he uses this guy as his urologist as well. And he said, well, you know, he said, uh, uh, I've even had my doubts. You know, um, he said, I'd get a second opinion if I were you. He said, you, you know, it never hurts, and you probably should get a second opinion. So I called up the doctor he told me to call, and I got an appointment for next Thursday. And, uh, you know, to get a second opinion on this whole thing, that maybe this thing, he's just going a little too fast, too far, and that we should just wait and see what happens with this. Uh, you know, it's not like I, I it, according to him, he didn't think that it was an aggress particularly aggressive uh, cancer if it was one. But then he was talking afterwards about doing things like uh, hormone therapy, which is really chemical castration. 
and uh, or maybe some radiation, you know. And he says, I can keep you alive for the next 10 years. He said, it's not a, it's not a problem. It's not a big deal. And I'm going, well, you know, it sounds like a big deal to me because the word cancer is involved here. And so I, uh, I was happy to get the, I was delighted when I got this appointment with this doctor for a second opinion. But I don't know what he's going to say, you know. And I, all of a sudden I go online, I find this, uh, this thing that he, he gave me. It was like a, a, like a prescription for my doctor, and I f forgot to take it with me. Uh, but they were able to, to do the, the thing anyway. And here it is, see. Uh, and uh, it, number one, he spells my name wrong, and then he tells my doctor that my PSA went from a 2.5 to a 4.3 to a 6.7. Well, that's not exactly what happened. It went from a 2.9 to a 2.5 to a 3.3 to a 4.3 to a 6.7. So he didn't even have my numbers right, you know. So... Uh, you know, it's almost like, I don't know, it, it's something wrong here, you know. And so uh, I got this other doctor to, to see me. And I kind of, after talking to my doctor yesterday, I felt a little better about it. He said, I don't think, you know, it's anything really serious. He says, you may have prostate at your age, uh, cancer at your age. Uh, there's a 70% chance that you do because of your age, okay, and the fact that you're a male. And I said, so this is what I, what I have to look forward to in life, right? But he said, I don't think it's anything. I said, is there anything that's going to kill me? He says, nah. He said, it's, it's, it's fixable and so on. And see, see, see this other doctor. He says, he's a good one, and he'll, he'll give you a good opinion on this. And, and um, you know, so I felt pretty good about that. And I felt good enough last night that I told this whole story uh, about this thing. And uh, today, I started worrying again. And I get into these worry things where I start worrying about it and whether, you know, hey, is this, is this right? Is this going to be uh, uh, what we're going to, you know, uh, 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 you know, it, maybe, I, maybe this other doctor is going to say, yeah, you better have the biopsy because, you know, it looks like you could have, you could have aggressive cancer. So I go online and I look up PSA velocity, okay? And, and um, by the way, if you're sick, don't do what I do. Don't go on the Internet, all right? Because it, 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 it'll only make you more depressed. So I look up PSA velocity and it says, well, if you have a PSA velocity of more than two points a year, which this was, uh, you probably have an aggressive cancer. Well, that suddenly put me into a spin. And then I went and looked at other things on PSA velocity, and uh, I read a newer one. You see, you have to look at the dates when they're written, and some of them go back to like 2005. And it says uh, they used to think that PSA velocity was an indicator of an aggressive cancer, but recent findings have found out that velocity has nothing to do with whether you have cancer or not. Uh, if you find a lump on your, in your butt, you know, in your prostate, yeah, if you do the digital. Uh, but that it doesn't necessarily mean anything. So that calmed me down, but then I read another article that said, oh, but PSA velocity could do, you know, and so I am just, you know, I'm sitting here just panicking like crazy. Um, and I almost didn't go on the air tonight just because I was so upset. But then I went, so what am I going to do? I'm not going to go on the air, and then I'm not going to be talking with people, and so I'm just going to lie in bed uh, depressed and worried about this, you know. So I don't know what the story is. And I, you know, I, I all of a sudden yesterday I was feeling really good after I talked to my doctor, but after time has passed and that memory has faded a little bit, uh, I, feel, I feel worse, okay? But who knows, maybe this other doctor will say, nah, you know, let's, let's just watch it. You should probably just watch it, you know. We'll see. I don't know. So when I die of prostate cancer, you can say I told you so, you know. But I, so I, I am like, I'm at my wit's end, you know, and I'm not about ready to take any um, antidepressants or any uh, 
things like Xanax or whatever to calm me down because that, that's not going to solve the problem. And quite frankly, since I haven't been taking the uh, Xanax every night to go to sleep or anything to go to sleep except a little hit of pot, uh, I'm feeling much more lucid. Uh, and um, maybe I would, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I, maybe it would help. I don't know. But So uh, I keep looking at the Internet to find some way that I've got really terrible, aggressive prostate cancer. Uh, and, uh, but I, you know, I may, I may not, but my doctor seems to think that, uh, no, he says, he says he has had, uh, you know, patients over the years and over a third of his male patients, uh, came down with prostate cancer. And he said only one was dangerous. And that was in all the, he's been in, he's been doctoring for 40 years now, you know, and he just said, don't, you know, don't worry about it. He says, if you need the biopsy, uh, you get it, you know. But um, uh, he said, I would get a second opinion. Uh, also, the other reason I didn't want to do the biopsy with this doctor is he wanted to do it at his office. And his office is filthy, you know. It is really, uh, 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 it, it, and my doctor, who, who goes to him, agreed with me on that. And I just said, I just don't know if the hygienics of it all uh, appeal to me. But I said, can I hold it off for a couple of weeks? I mean, it's not going to kill me. He says, no, no, not at all. Don't worry about it, you know. It's not like it has to be done tomorrow because you're, you know, you've got this horrible rampant prostate cancer. He said, if you have it, it's probably confined to the prostate and it's slow and, you know. But I want, a, I want a doctor that also isn't going to say to me, I'm going to give you chemical castration to solve the problem. I'd rather they take out my fucking prostate, you know, uh, and have done with it than, than do that because the effects of that are just devastating. Whereas having your prostate cut out, you pee your pants a lot. Uh, hopefully, after a while, that goes away, you know. And there are other... Uh, uh, ways they can do it and so on and so forth. So I, you know, uh, but I, you know, the idea that I uh, have to suddenly go from, okay, you're all right, to, oh, no, you're sick, you're dying, you've got, you've got prostate cancer, uh, just, you know, this drives me crazy. And this doctor even told me, he said, oh, I can give you the, the hormones and I can give you the, you know, whatever, and you, I can keep you alive for the next 10 years without any trouble. You know, we'll be talking to each other 10 years from now. Um, you know, I'm sure probably something else will kill me, you know, uh, even if I did nothing about this. Uh, because I don't feel I've, I don't even feel I've got anything, you know. I mean, I, uh, and he did, you know, he did the digital thing and he didn't feel anything in there. And he always wanted me with his, uh, 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 what do you call it, the thing they do for women who are pregnant. Um, and he did that, and then he also did one of those up my ass and did a sonic reading of my prostate on the, on that, and he didn't see anything in any of these things. The only thing he saw was some calcium deposits and uh, uh, a prostate that's a little larger than most, or than usual. So, you know, what have you, I don't know, I give up, you know. And it's got me all bothered. And the reason I'm talking about it to you right now is because if I didn't, uh, I would be um, a real mess throughout the show trying to hold it back. So I, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. And nobody's watching this anyway. I, I don't know why I do this every night. I really don't. It's, it, it, it's really insane. But anyway, um, Otherwise, I went to the dentist today because I've been, I've been going to a dentist. I found a really good dentist, Marjorie Founder, actually. And uh, I, we've been going to this dentist that, God, I can't believe the difference between my old dentist and the new one. I mean, it, it's the difference between pure professionalism and a bunch of people running around their office not knowing what they're doing. And uh, so she found uh, two cavities, or three cavities, actually, two and one tooth, and then another one that she's going to do next week, and then she's got to redo a filling back here that uh, is cracked, 
so they, they so I have a couple of bit of work to do, but I've got the insurance and uh, it hasn't been costing me that much. But I had this uh, deep scale keep cleaning. They did had to do deep root scale cleaning. That's why uh, people said, why are they charging you seventy dollars a visit on your on your insurance? as a copay, and I said, I don't know, it's just a cleaning, usually they take care of that for free. Uh, but uh, it turns out that I had to have deep scale root cleaning. And so I went in on the other day and then I went in today, and this woman was taking forever. I mean, now I'm not blaming her for that, and I'm not saying that was terrible or that she was terrible at what she was doing. She was incredible at what she was doing. I mean, she was getting down there and probably finding a steak dinner I had back in 1956 down there, you know. Uh, but um, uh, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm lying, you know, it's just, it goes on forever. See, I, I asked them, do you have gas? And they say, well, you don't want gas for having your teeth cleaned. And you don't want to, I had a filling yet, two, a couple of days ago and she said, you don't need gas for this. And I just feel I need gas for everything. I used to go in to my dentist in San Francisco, and I used to get my teeth cleaned, and they would give me gas. Why? Because it's so boring sitting in that seat, and it is so it gets it gets really annoying having somebody scraping away at your tartar. Okay, that if you at least have gas. It goes by much faster and much more pleasant. And you're getting high, right? But no, no gas. So I'm sitting there with my mouth open for an hour. As she's going down, she's digging way down. I, you know, she, I think I, I, I fell to touch my penis with her drill. It was that deep, right? And uh, of course, at the rate things are going with me, that'd be really nice. Um, uh, but anyway, where was I going? Um, so um, as I'm sitting there, I, I have some music going on in my head, earphones, you know, uh, and uh, I'm trying to deal with it, and I'm thinking about all kinds of things, not the least of which is my cancer, you know, the prostate thing. And um, I... Uh, suddenly come up with the weirdest question to ask the dental hygienist. And after we're through, because this, I started wondering about something and it started obsessing with me and I had to have the technical answer. As you know, when you go to the dentist, it used to be in the old days, uh, if you were having dental work done, uh, they would say spit and then you would go over to the, they had a spit sink right on the chair. And you spit in the spit chair. But they don't have those anymore. Uh, instead, they have the suck matic They have that thing they put in your mouth, uh, like that, that's uh, sucking air. And then uh, whenever you feel your mouth welling up with uh, stuff, whether it's blood or uh, tartar or whatever, you simply suck on it, and it sucks all the stuff into the, into the suction thing. And I'm thinking to myself, where does that stuff go, you know? Um, you know, it, 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 they suck it out of me, but then where does it go? So after we're through with this whole thing, I, I, I said to her, I got a question for you. And she said, what? I said, the suction thing, you know, when you suck all the spit out of me and all the tartar and all the blood and stuff like that, where does it go? And she looked at me and she said, I have no idea. I'll have to ask somebody one of these days. She didn't know where it went. I'm thinking like, maybe there's a law and it's biohazard because there's blood in there. There's gotta be some blood in there. There's spit and there's tartar, you know? And so what do they do? Where does all that go? Does it just, you know, does it go to the toilet and they just flush it once an hour or something like that? I don't know. But if you ever asked, where your spit goes. That's gonna be the title of my next book, or my only book. You know, where does the spit go? Anyway, so, you know, so today I'm walking uh, to the dentist, 
and I'm, I'm starting to get this depression is starting to come on again. And anybody who wants to help get me out of it tonight, please call. I'll open up the lines in a moment. Uh, and I'm, I'm passing by this uh, e eating place where everybody's you know, eating at the counters and stuff like that. You know, it's lunchtime. And uh, I look in, and I see all these people. They range in age from, I'd say these were, some, these were people who were working, so they range in age from maybe 20 to upward. And I looked in there, and I said to myself, you know, in 75 years, everybody in that place is probably going to be dead. Right? It's like we have a complete turnover in the planet. You know, when I was born, there were people dying. And now the people who were born when I was born are all dying. And it, it's just this constant turnover of, of, of people. And that all the people that I see as I'm walking down the street, 100 years from now, won't be here. They will all be dead. I can guarantee it, all right? So we're only here for a small amount of time on the planet. So then, tonight, I'm watching one of the episodes of The Planets, which is a show the BBC did for their Earth uh, uh, project. And it's about all the different planets and uh, how long ago they were created and how much they, you know, how, the, how, what, how they came to be and so on. And it, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, but as I'm watching it, they're going, and so 4.8 billion years ago, here's how Mercury was created. And I'm thinking 4.8 billion years ago you know my lifespan which I think has been important to me which is now 79 years doesn't even it would be a grain of sand in that time frame maybe not even a grain of sand it might be a paramecium or something like that you know just infinitesimal and all our lives here, am I depressing you? I, I hope not. Uh, uh, but uh, all it, it, it's just, what, what am I trying to say here? It, it, our lives are so infinitesimal. We have such a small little part of history here that we can survive. And then we die. And shouldn't all those years be as pleasant as is humanly possible? And why is it that mankind, in its infinite horribleness, tries to make life miserable for everybody else on the planet? They go to war. They become an asshole president. I mean, why, why can't we just care about making sure that what short lifespan we have and if I live to be a hundred that's still a short lifespan compared to 4.8 billion years right why can't we just do good by each other why is it that we, we, we just we just keep making our lives a living hell for each other it's not right it's just not right so anyway Nobody's watching tonight. I shouldn't even go to the phones. I should just hang up and say that's it. Oh, what do you know? Uh, the last guy doing the show left the phones open. So you could have called at any time, and my f the phones would have rang or rung or did something, you know. So anyway, um, uh, I've got the lines open. The lines have been open. Uh, so I'll just uh, let you call if you want to uh, but I, I you know I'm 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 I, I'm I'm really not been in a good way you know they they tell people the common wisdom is that you don't give prostate to PSA exams tests these blood tests to anybody over the age of 75 and certainly not to someone who is approaching 80 and the reason is, is exactly what's happening to me, is the anguish and the, uh, uh, that you go through dealing with this, you know. So anyway, 
Uh, Phil Meyer is called, and uh, I, can, I don't even have to find him a place. There's a place for him right there from last night. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. I saw the lines were open, but I was waiting for the invitation. Uh, here comes Josh Wheeler. Let me get uh, Josh here, and let me also uh, give him a spot here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, here comes, well, now i got to go cancel. Let me do it again. There, 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 oh, there's Josh. Now let me try and bring him up. Uh, there we go, Josh W. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. There's Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Here comes Jeff Stein. I think I, I think he may have had that same spot last night, but I'm not sure. Uh, While on. you fill the spots, I'm going to get a glass of Wait water. Now I can't get him. I can't get him to uh, come up. I I. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, there we go. We got Jeff Stein finally. He was a little off the uh, off the beaten track here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Jeff Stein. There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, there's Jeff. Okay. See him down there? Right down there? Okay. All right. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Good. Yeah. And how are you, Josh? Doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, um, so 4.8 billion years ago, a lot of the universe, the planets as we know it, were formed. Uh, they were formed. There was solar dust out there. And the solar dust congealed with each other. That took about a million years. And then things crashed into each other, these boulders. And finally, they all became planets. Uh, taking maybe, I don't know, half a billion years for that whole process to take place. And you say to yourself, and I only live to be like this long, you know, fuck that. What's that all about? You know, uh, I don't understand it. So, uh, you know, whatever. Let me just, uh, let me see here. Uh, bu -bu 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 uh, I have to, sometimes it's, it takes me a while to get uh, somebody in here because I sometimes go to them too quickly. There we go, Charles Wallace. There we go. He's he's up now, and uh, there there we got Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you today? I'm doing better. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So you know, so I uh, I, I just sat there uh, tonight, just going, God, we're so insignificant. We're just such. A, we're just a speck, you know, <laughs> and we can't treat each other well on this planet you know we have to play all these silly fucking games you know i mean it, it's really uh i i just think we should all be nicer to each other uh it, we we just aren't nice enough um let me see dan just called let me see here where is dan uh, up here yet uh, gosh i not no yeah, uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes if I wait, I have to wait a little, a couple of seconds before a name comes up. Now, hey, Alex, uh, yeah. I'm not a speck. I'm a splotch. You're a splotch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let me see here. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, there's, uh, there's Dan. He's. Uh, yeah. He's there. What? What's that noise? Am I making noise again? Yes, you're making yeah. noise again. Your microphone is too loud. I got to get back on my uh, thing in the PC because this phone thing really isn't well, working out yeah, as well, well as I it, hope. Well, well, it tends to suck out sound when you first turn it on. Now it's fine. Okay. It's got to adjust. Does it sound better now? Yeah, it sounds better now. Yeah, it's yeah. an automatic adjustment. Mm. Yeah. But you can turn that off. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, whatever. Anyway. So anyway, why why we can't take care of each, you know be nicer to each other and why we make life miserable for other people and why you know why there are Hitlers and things like that? I mean, is that yes? It's because you're Democrats. Is that oh, stop it, Phil? Jesus, I'm trying to get serious here for a second. It's to bring us all together. What? What? We need to be a uniter, not a divider. Well, it's not a question of being a uniter. It's a question of why, why, can, why do we have to make, why do certain people feel compelled to make other people's lives miserable on this planet? You know? We should deserve it. Enjoy it. <laughs> well, 
they're they're uh, you know they're if if their pleasure equals somebody else's misery, they're more concerned about their pleasure than the other's misery. Well, you know, I just so. I don't understand. I don't understand quest for power. Me either. You, you know. Uh, that makes no sense to me at all, and and uh, the quest for power is generally going to make some people miserable while you attain it, or when you've got it, you know, and it's it's uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. So you know, and I think about you know I'm I'm 79. Who knows how many years I have left? You know, I could live to be 100. I could live to be till November. You know. Who knows? Nobody knows. And uh, I say to myself, uh, you know, uh, why, why is it that all my life there's always been somebody out there tr trying to make my life miserable? I'm not talking about, you know, a girlfriend or an uh, individual, but people who run things, run countries and so on, and the games they play. And, and I don't know why. Is this human nature that we're talking about? I think it is, sadly enough. Well, then we don't deserve to go anywhere, you know? Maybe not. Maybe, you know, uh, I mean, like racism and xenophobia, I think that has roots in, as horrible as it is in society, it has its roots in our, uh, you know, back when we were cavemen, if, you know. If you do, saw, do you think, yeah, cave, do you think cavemen had racism? I'm oh, sure I agree. Did. Yeah. I'm sure there were racist cavemen all over the place. Well, I, I, you know, I know that the Neanderthals were very afraid of the Homo sapiens. Yeah, yeah. well, we wiped them out. We and wiped for them good out. Reason, well, you, yeah. well, 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 you know why? <laughs> that, that, that was like the beginning of our destructive nature. We well, do you know? Do you, do you, no, but do you know why the Neanderthals uh, disappeared? Because they weren't social. Uh, they, they, uh, Homo sapiens had a tendency to be social. In other words, uh, to get together in groups and do things together in groups and so on. And, and Neanderthals weren't that way. They weren't social. And it was the lack of being sociable that pretty much, much drove them to the ocean, uh, to the sea, and to the extinction. So. If well, you I were a Neanderthal, uh, would you? Uh, if you were a Homo sapien, would you want to hang out with a Neanderthal? Come on, look at those guys. I, well, they they well, were around. They were a around. A lot of them. Uh, there's been there was a lot of interbreeding. So yeah, uh, the, you know, Neanderthals. Of, Neanderthals. Hey, and, those Homo sapiens will fuck mud. On. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens lived side by lived at the same time, but they really didn't yeah. have much to do with each other. You know. So. Oh, I, th I I don't think that's true. I think that the uh, Homo sapiens were raping them and oh yeah, them and just because well, most of us Homo sapiens we're all a bunch of assholes anyway, so of course that's what we do. What I mean, you know, we did things like we formed armies, and what were what was what was the uh, uh, the, the the purpose of of uh, of armies? It was to destroy people, to destroy yeah. things, to gain power. How about protect your uh, village from other people that wanted to destroy you. You always have to change it, don't you, Phil? No, it's you you said that you made a statement and I'm and I'm refuting that statement. I'm saying I don't agree with it. You don't and, agree uh, that, that some people uh, some people uh, wanted to pillage and rape villages. Yeah, and that's why other people had armies to keep that from happening. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And so, so the whole, the whole, it, so what you're saying is it's a whole vicious cycle. Right. It may turn into that. You know. But, uh, you know, there are those that want peace through strength. <laughs> there is no peace through strength. Well, not according to uh, uh, Sun uh, that general, uh, uh, who, Chinese who give, general. Who gives a shit Sun about Sun him? Who, who gives a general shit about Tso? him? Huh? Yeah. The art of war, big fucking deal. Yeah. You know, the only idiots quote that. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's taught in uh, West Point. Uh, well, West Point is a military organization, and they're out to rape and pillage. Maybe through strength. <laughs> you know, this whole this whole thing about strength is just you know ridiculous. What? Wait, what happened to Tony? Tony called, and then he hung up. I don't know.
He got a better deal. He got a better deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, oh, here he, here he comes again. Here he comes. There we go. Now, uh, I, I, Tony joined. Okay. Oh, there's Tony. Okay. Let me give him a little space here. Um, uh, Tony Quisp. There we go. All right. Okay. Tony. Are you there? There's Tony. There's Tony. Okay. All righty. All righty. All righty. All righty. Uh, let me see here. Um, hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. I'm so, trying Tony, to... doesn't the city have any codes? They let you show up half shaven, you know? Uh, <laughs> Uh, hair disheveled. What, what's the story here? Gotta, what, what kind of city are you working for? This this De Plasio will hire anybody. You know what? Yeah. De Plasio. He works for the city of New York. You said De Plasio. De Plasio. Oh, okay. You said De Plasio. Yeah. I got a short haircut for that. My hair was going crazy. It feels. I feel neat though. I was so hot. I was going to get it all shaved off. Really? <laughs> I was so that he was Alex. stolen me over the. I didn't yeah, want to leave I, the house. I was I, like, I, you out. I, I so came back in. Yeah, I should have gotten a haircut today. I couldn't take that humidity anymore. I always feel better after a haircut. Yeah, I feel relaxed. I should have let him shave me. I didn't do it. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I let him shave me. I don't. I'm I'm hundred and ten dollars lighter after a haircut. <laughs> do you, you spend that much money on a haircut, Phil? You spend too much. Now I'm having them color it. They're putting in uh, a little bit of pepper. You know, like I got white hair, so they make it salt and pepper. Why don't you just let it go gray? Yeah. It is gray. You, what, 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 a gray would be okay. It's white. Gray, you need Phil, are you trying to get laid? Hey, is hey. that what this is all about? What's that? You trying to get so laid? A wig? <laughs> Are you trying no, to get laid? Trying to get laid. No, no it wouldn't work. It's yeah, just so good why? For peeing. So fuck it. Just let the hair go gray. You know. Yeah, I got an image. I did. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm I'm a gabnet participant. I can't just brand. let it go gray. It's his brand. His branding. His branding. Yeah, his branding. Yeah. Branding gets a phone. If I lose weight, you'll see what I'll buy for myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got to give myself a gift if I lose weight. But uh, uh, so anyway, so that I, I was, was I've been very depressed today. So it's you know it's one of those days, right? Where I uh, uh, and and I I keep going online. And oh, you do I do Google? Huh? You do the Google like I do, right? Well, no, what do I have? <laughs> no, not like you do. Do you look up cancer? Well, when my mom was sick. I was doing it, and I was getting, oh. I was getting worried. I was, oh boy, I hope they can get this out. And I was, a, you know, it's all. I think you're fine, Alex. I don't like the idea that he did that test over seventy-five. Like he shouldn't have did that. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and my doctor wasn't that happy with the, the that concept either. You know, uh, and and he felt that uh, he felt that there's something maybe a little wrong there, but you know. But on the other hand, he wrote down on that little piece of paper how my PSA had gone up from a 2.5 to a 4.3 to a 6.7. He forgot that in the middle there, there was a 3-something from my doctor and that it started out at a 2.9 and went down to a 2.5, you know. So it's been all over the place. But no, he saw, he, he didn't even have the numbers right, my doctor. Yeah. Mm. You know. Um. Yeah, you, you, you don't. Like, you don't. That's... What? What? What'd you say? You don't Tom? like suggestions from me medically, but uh, it, have them do a blood test and check your neutrophils and your white blood cell count and compare it to what it had been in the past and see if you've had a fairly large increase in those things. And if you did, you may have proselyti uh, proselytitis. I don't have proselytitis. Uh, you, you, uh, well, I don't uh, have any of the symptoms of prostatitis, Phil. Yeah, but sometimes you have the change in PSA, and that might be the indicator. Uh, and those two blood tests are the ones that uh, will help you. Can you, you see have prostatitis without? You have can you have prostatitis without without symptoms? I don't think so. I well, you know, you're taking things that relieve the symptoms, like uh, finasteride and uh, this. Uh, 
uh, the, um, who, what do you who call knows? it? Who Cialis. Knows? Who knows? But, you know, I mean, the doctor, my doctor seemed to think, well, it's probably, I said, do you, th you think there's any chance that it's not cancer? He says, well, you know, um, uh, you know, he was, he was so sure that I probably had cancer, which I probably do. But, you know, at my age, uh, it's very, it, in most cases, it's very slow growing. And uh, I don't know, but it just, it just, you know, I was feeling so good yesterday, and then I started letting myself worry, you know? Mm. And, and Why don't you do what I do when I'm depressed? Right. What? I, I eat and spend money. And, <laughs> and then when I get depressed over getting fat and, having, and spending all that money on junk, then I pay off the credit cards, and I'm happy that they're now zero again. Hmm. <laughs> So it's a never-ending cycle. You spend maybe. the money, you run up the cards, you pay them off, you feel great. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe you just need to become an alcoholic. I don't know. I mean, that, it could that's, be. that's a good it one. Could be. I don't know. I mean, I uh, uh, start drinking heavily. If I, you know, I mean, if I, uh, if I wasn't af so afraid of death, I'd kill myself. Okay, you know, uh, why not? You know, don't do that. I'm up here on the eighth. <laughs> Eighth floor of a building with big, wide, gaping windows, and I've thought about it. You know. Well, you could practice first. Yeah. What? Start I jumping mean, out of the first floor and first. see how it goes. <laughs> well, you know, you'll know if it works. Yeah. Guys falling out of a building, forty-story yeah. building. He gets now that's the... a splat and not wait a, minute, a wait speck. Minute, wait a minute. He he uh, he uh, gets to about the twentieth floor, and some guy sticks his head out the window and says, "How's how's it going?" He says, "So far, so good." <laughs> you know, that's how I feel about life. Yeah. You know, can it be? Can I say something? I heard you in the beginning. You know, you were how you were down. I was listening to it. Mm -hmm. Can it be that? I don't know, maybe, I mean, I know I'm younger than you, but I'm saying now that I see people getting older, passing away, I'm not meaning you, Alex. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think about my own mortality. Maybe we're starting to think about it like... Oh, I'm, you know, I, you know, I'm not only I'm thinking about, about it. it. Like, what's I, not really I, important? I, I can't see a future. That's how bad it, it's gotten with me. You know, when really <laughs> I, should, I should say, fuck it, and I should live every day like it is my last and enjoy myself. Yeah, but I somehow good. can't bring myself to do that. Because we don't know how long anybody really has. You can go another 15, 20 years. You never know. I mean, listen, you know, I mean, um, um, well, I lost my friend Paul Krasner, but he was 87, you know. So young. So young. Well, my mom, you know, I it's like the story I always tell about Rutger my mother. Howard was only 75. What? Who? Rutger Howard was Rutger only 75. He was only 75, yeah. My, my, my mother uh, was uh, 90, and her best friend was 92 wow. and she died and my mother said to me how could she go she was so young oh, you see because she, she's still young to her yeah. you know my mother said yeah. the other night the golden years suck she though. said <laughs> huh? you know I still I still except for the aches and pains yeah. think and feel like I was 25 you know I, I don't you know I don't feel old well wait till you get to be my age Phil you, uh, one day you wake up and you go, my feet are numb. My feet are numb. This hurts yeah. me. This is a problem I've got. Blah, 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 blah. And before you go, you know, like Betty Davis hey. said, getting old ain't for sissies. You know? but yeah. my, I gotta, can I say one thing? My mom, I came back from work with my sister, so I bought her bananas. By the way, is this depressing? Hold on a second. Is this depressing you yeah. folks out there? Well, it should. It okay, should. anyway, go no, ahead. They love it. You know, she said, she said, Aunt, did you get my bananas? I says, yeah, I got, I got the bananas because she had a little diarrhea. I, she goes, I says, Ma, how are the golden years? You know, she goes, they fucking suck. <laughs> did she say they fucking suck? Yeah, I can get, you want me to tell her? No, I, she no, 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 no. She says, they fucking suck. We, we don't need your, <laughs> I haven't been we, we don't need Carter your Blanks mother on the show. You're enough. You know, I know. Yeah. She, she would have you cracking up. I says, you know, Dude, but record it on your phone. How old is you? How, how old is your mother? She's a year younger than you. Oh Jesus! Christ. But she's very. I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> but Alex, you'll do you'll do circles around her. She couldn't keep up with you. But she has a good sense of humor still. Really? Oh yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah, she does. She, I, I, she's like my aunt. But it does. Know, it, does it does. It does. They have a good sense of humor. It does fucking suck. I mean, there's no question about that. Yeah. 
So she says, you know, don't make him kids. She says, enjoy your life. She says, it fucking. You know what it is? Because she gets down. Because a lot of people are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's see here. So anyway, <laughs> so I I got to stop going on the internet and trying to diagnose. You know. Yeah, uh, that's. You know, going on web but and because you I, like no that. because I read one thing and it says that oh the PSA velocity means if you've got the more than two milligrams a year, uh, it's uh, it could be aggressive cancer. Well, they're speaking first of all about people who are younger who get it. Okay, you know they're not saying if you're this age or whatever. And did it say that? Huh? Oh yeah, but then did, in, it, it, did it, it specifically say if you're younger? No, 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 uh, no, no. No, it just says. Well, they're talking about the, younger people. It, these are the statistics they found. Well, they, you know, they're uh, dealing with 55-year-old people, 65-year-old people. Uh, you know, but the point is that I I see that article, and then right below it is an article that says PSA velocity doesn't matter and doesn't show if you have cancer or not. Right. And I read that, and that's a newer article than the one that I had. You know, that makes me a little they better. say, well, yeah, they said, uh, well, they've kind of discounted that. They said if, yeah. if there are no other factors there, it doesn't matter how fast it's going up. Uh, if you if you can't feel a lump in your prostate and you don't you know, have any of the other signs, you probably just should sit there and wait. It, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what this doctor is going to say. He may say, go you straight want- to biopsy. My God, you've got full hard on cancer, you know, so. Uh, I bet you how, didn't see how, do the they, hmm? how do they know they're just not feeling shit, you know, when they stick their finger up there? Uh, well, you know? They know the difference between yeah, shit and... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what they tell you when they charge you, but it, really, they, they just like sticking their finger yeah. in there. But anyway, so my but I, my doctor yesterday did not have was not armed with this uh, number. Well, he I gave him the numbers. I gave him my numbers, and he said, nah. yeah. He said, yeah, you, you know, he says you can get a rise. You, in there you can you know. can get a rise in your prostate from sitting too much. You know, he said it's it's uh, he said it, it, it's it, he didn't feel it's. I feel that the whole process, the PSA thing, should be thrown out the door. And they should start working on other stuff that will tell you whether people have prostate cancer without having to, you know, go directly to biopsy, you know, so whatever. So, uh, and, uh, you know, Phil's been biopsied, what, twice, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. And it was no fun, you know. I, I would not recommend it as something that you do to enjoy yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah but I, from uh, what I hear is if they use anesthetic and so on, you should be okay. They yeah. did. They hit me with a hammer. How, but, was, how, uh, how, 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 how was it afterwards? Uh, uh, for about a month, you're pissing blood. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. deep. You should have got a you second. ejaculate. Oh, and now, you you ejaculate see, now, now you see why I, now you see why I don't want a, uh, a biopsy. You know, I, I, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm 80 years old. I don't need to go through that kind of stress and strain, you know? Yeah, there's, yeah, you don't, you would, you shouldn't, I wouldn't uh, feel any pressure to do it. I it's always your thought body. that it's your body, Alex, it's your choice. Yeah. I thought it, at body. this age, they never don't do anything. Do with your body. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, now this next doctor may say that to me. That, you know, we just you sit know. here and wait and watch and see what happens, you know. Yeah, enjoy yourself and go to Ibiza. Buy the T-shirt. I mean, it could be my prostate's just getting old and the effects of old age are that it, the PSA is going up, you know. So, uh, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I uh, I really shouldn't think about it. I, I, I got to stay off the fucking computer, all right? So, so let's, ta- let's talk about something. Oh, this is, uh, I guess I got to talk about something. Anything happening in the news I should know about? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Mueller is, uh, <laughs> sounds like Biden. <laughs> he did sound you, you know something? Yeah. I got to tell you something about uh, Mueller. Let me, so let me ask Jeff. He this. didn't come Jeff, across too Jeff, well. did you want just, just shut up, Phil, because after I say what I'm going to say, you're going to feel bad about what you just said. Uh, Phil, uh, wait, Jeff, wait. Did, you, how, did you watch it at all? I, 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 was, I watched most of it. And what was your takeaway of Mueller? I thought he did very well. Okay. But did you feel, as I felt, that he didn't look well? No, he didn't. I don't remember. Yeah, I... 
very gray. I, I think he, I think he may not be well. And he was all hunched over. Huh? Yeah. He was all hunched over whenever well, it was he was not only hunched over, up. just the look in his face was like ashes. Gaunt. Wasn't it gaunt? Yeah. Like yeah. He was dead already. Yeah. Uh I wouldn't Definitely. be surprised if right in a couple just... of months we hear of him dying. I'm really I'm serious about this. Yeah. Maybe he's already dead oh, yeah. so I, by I weekend with Bernie. Too. You know. Um uh, you know, I, but a lot of, uh, very, I, very well, I watched about a half hour of it and said this is boring and uh, it's predictable. Here come the Republicans blasting yeah. him. Here come the Democrats praising him. Then it's back to a Republican blasting him and then back to a Democrat praising him rather than everybody sitting there together trying to get some answers, you know, and, and to get a, a better vision. Every of, Everybody of, has to get their question on TV. Yeah, but I mean... It's in it, the report. It, it, well, it, yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's in the report. What isn't redacted is in the report. It sounded to me like Mueller never read that report. Oh, it oh, didn't sound to me it. like he didn't read it. You know, sounded, what, it what, what page was that on? Well, wait a minute. What paragraph? Phil, Did if I you, say that? Phil, I if, don't remember. If Phil, if you would put together a two-volume Report was it 400 pages? You're not going to remember every word. Like that. So believe it or not, pages. you're not going to remember every page and everything that's in there. So you're going to have to say, okay, he what page is that on? What? He wasn't remembering much of anything, and then he had to no, he clarify. He was, he, was, he, next, he was remembering. And the next he, thing, he was he was okay, that, Phil. Phil, Jeff has his hand up. Congressman Lou Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I think uh, a number of things that he had to look up is because he didn't write those parts. Other people wrote different parts. And but he didn't I, read it either. No, I'm sure he, he I'm sure he read the whole thing, Phil. He's a very yeah. assiduous guy. I'm sure he read every single page before he let that report go right. out and have and, his and name. He was being very particular about what he would say and what he would not say. Well, he yeah. what he what he wanted to say was was keep within the scope of the report, and and what happened was they did ask him what he meant about things because it, it was you know like a statement like uh, just because we didn't find uh, just because we didn't charge anybody with anything didn't mean it didn't happen basically, uh, yeah. and and uh, uh, they wanted to know what he how we felt about that. You know, and they had to ask him directly. I mean, he said, "Do you feel the Russians helped get Trump elected?" And he said, "Yes." Yes. You know, uh, so uh, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, uh, they asked him, uh, you know, if he felt that uh, uh, that he could eliminate Trump as uh, being uh, um, what, exonerated. It, 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 no, exonerated because of uh, the um, the. The feeling about him, uh, 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 what's the word we're looking for? Uh, huh? Collusion. Collusion? The collusion in, in, in stopping people from testifying, things like that. And he said, no, I can't make that statement that he wasn't guilty of that. I said, we just can't make the statement that he is. You know? So, I mean. So then he's not. Well, no, that doesn't mean that, Phil. What it means is, is that uh, there is reason to believe good reason to believe that, uh, you know, that, it, it, that he, he did try to keep people from testifying and tried to muddle the investigation. Uh, In this and, country, are you innocent until proven guilty? Uh, yes, but you can be charged. Uh, and that's called... Yeah, and that's, but they and, didn't charge him. And that, well, it, it, stick around, you know. Who knows, you know. We can't do it till he's out of office. Yeah, we can't yep. do it till he's out of office. Yeah. Now this thing's going away. This thing's dead in the water, and in another Radio two Mall. weeks, it'll be out of the news cycle, and uh, we'll be building the wall. Game on. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Now, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if somebody knows why is it that you cannot indict a sitting president? That's the like the worst office of the legal counsel, LLC. Uh, it's, it's created not, a memo. Yeah, it's not yeah. a law. It's just a a. It's, a, a, memo. it's a statement of policy. Right. Yeah. Well, well, 
also Robert Mueller is I, I would tr I would trust everything he says because Robert Mueller is so by the book it's ridiculous. Well, he's also you know they were making a big deal about oh you know there's so many Democrats working on your committee. He said number one he said when I hire somebody to do this kind of work I don't ask them about their politics I ask yeah, them, yeah. I I I, 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 I want them to be competent I want them to be good and I want them to be honest uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, um, but he he. People didn't remember, but Mueller is a Republican. Yeah, <laughs> lifelong. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> no, he's. Hey, he's, you know, Patrick what do you is mean? a Republican. What, he what do you support what, Trump? What, yeah. What, what do you mean lifelong, but not now, Phil? <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Just Patrick be, was a Republican. No, I'm talking and, about you. Were, I was and talking doesn't support I, no, Trump. I, Mueller may still be a Republican. That makes him more but that doesn't, Republican. It doesn't mean he but doesn't. doesn't it matter. doesn't mean he doesn't support Trump. Although it's pretty hard to support somebody who every day called you uh, a witch hunter and uh, yeah. uh, you know the incompetent youth. and uh, uh, whatever. I mean the name. No, he doesn't like Trump. You can tell. He well, I like mean, him. why should he like Trump? Is there any right. reason for him to like Trump? No, no it's, reason. It's like it, yes, it there are four yeah, women. Man. There are four women in the Congress right now who hate Trump. But they have every reason Trump, to. Trump didn't give Mueller his uh, his fees back to, at Mar-a-Lago, oh. and, uh, <laughs> and and Trump is saying that that's why uh, Mueller's got a thing for him because he screwed him. I think it was fifteen grand or twenty-five grand. Fifteen you know? grand uh, is peanuts to these guys. Man, nah, he's just a government worker. Are you kidding, Phil? You know that's so. That's so. Uh, I I would say that is so low of Trump. But then again, he's capable of that sort of thing. Low for Trump. Every time he says it's a new low, he'll get lower. It just gets lower. It just gets he was lower. losing guys right and left. Look at Epstein. Epstein left the club. Now Mueller can't get in. Uh, you know. Yeah. Mar-a-Lago's in trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Oh, All right, how you doing, Alex? Good. Uh, did you uh, watch the uh, the Mueller histrionics today? Yeah, I watched it for a while, and then I had to go to the doctor, so I didn't watch the uh, the ship show. Yeah, well, I was uh, uh, I I was bored by it. I I didn't watch. Yeah, it, it was I, it was pretty boring. It was was it was expected, you know. Yeah, I I I turned it off. I went and watched. I think porn actually. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just, I just, uh, you know, how they make the uh, porn version, porn versions of everything, they'll make the porn version of uh, the Mueller report. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that isn't even a you can't even masturbate to it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's not like the star report. The star report that was good stuff, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I blew him. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was very good. And he stuck the cigar. Yeah. You know? yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, I, I, um, uh, and I, I still think that there was a benign neglect on the part of the Trump people when it came to Russia. Well, mm -hmm. let's hear what they have to say. Well, let's uh, kind of imply that we will, but we won't. You know, I mean, it was it, it was a benign neglect. If they really cared about it, if they really were concerned about it, they would have called the FBI and said, "Listen, we've been approached by the Russians, and we want you to know that." And you don't see any correlation between the five billion dollar uh, fine uh, on Facebook and uh, you know that they sold that information. To, what was the name of that company? Um, Cambridge Analytica. Uh, the, yeah, uh, you're not seeing any any correlation between all of this stuff. What? Uh, and no. What? What? what, that, what, that, what? that Facebook was complicit in in the uh, Russian uh, collusion. Yeah. Well, they were. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, and they're going after Trump. It. I think this what is just a cloud. Well, Trump, uh, Phil, Trump, Phil, Trump knew about it, and he he was he welcomed <laughs> the help. He didn't have to do anything, but he welcomed. He welcomed so, the assistance from another country to influence and damage our elections. We don't, we don't and really for even know who's another country, that Dan. Claim to be a patriot and support that is ridiculous. Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. You know, the, the WikiLeaks dumps, uh, they're saying that uh, who is the, the guy on the Clinton campaign? 
that got killed. Uh, they said he got Vince uh, Foster. robbed. Pardon me? Not Vince Foster. No, no, that was Clinton early. This is this was during the Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, and they're saying that he was the one that uh, exposed the uh, emails and uh, and so forth from the DNC, uh, and it wasn't WikiLeaks. Uh, I heard that today. Uh, of course, I didn't write down anything. Oh, of course not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Not. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm trying to think of this guy's name. It'll come to me. I'll find it. Uh, but uh, he was, uh, he died. Uh, they said that he was, um, uh, he was robbed, but, uh, and he died during the robbery. But uh, it's also, they're saying that this is the guy that exposed those emails, uh, the DNC emails. Yeah, yeah. And not WikiLeaks. So maybe, how could Trump be complicit with the Wiki, WikiLeaks things if they weren't even the ones what, that did what are it? We, what are we seeing a, a fan for? Oh, uh, I just set my phone down. I was. That was very interesting, though. <laughs> yeah. That was a ceiling fan. It was kind of mesmerizing. Gonna... You know? Oh, yeah. Ooh. You hypnotized will... Gapnet. Yeah. <laughs> my ceiling fan. Is that kind of cool? Yeah. Oh, you think so? yeah. Yeah. Would you just move that camera somewhere else? I don't care if it's just. Honestly, <laughs> Dan, are you there? Yeah. Just. Get rid of that. We don't want to see that. Jeez. Okay, I'm back. God, I mean, do I have so to? So, Dan, you moved out of the family uh, apartment building. Uh, where did you where did you move to? Well, we mo I moved to a building that is owned, that the new owners of our old apartment building own. Mm -hmm. And we thought we could stay while the new owners mm -hmm. that we sold to uh, did what they needed to do, but then they were like, okay, you, sorry, you gotta go. So, we moved, and now I'm here by myself, and the apartment is smaller and easier to manage. Mm -hmm. And I'm flying solo again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we just got, let's see here, there we go. Ray. There's Ray. Hello, Ray, how are you? Uh, you might be muted, Ray. We can't hear you, Ray. Uh, we they can have, hear you, you have, barely, so you have to turn not the volume through. up. You have to turn your volume up. Yeah, you're the opposite of Dan. Oh, or it's not <laughs> plugged in all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you have volume yet? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, you know. I can barely hear him. I'm going to change my, sorry. Okay. The, the native one's not working. Yeah, well, you knew that the other day. Uh, no, that was, a, that was a, If we're hearing, we're hearing you, Ray, but we're not hearing you through your mic. The other day, that was, uh, that was a different. Wait, one. hit your mic. Hit your mic with your hand. Hit your mic with your hand. See if that's the hot one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just hit your mic with your hand, the, your mouth yeah, you know, mic. Like with your hand. Just, are you, can you hear me, Ray? Okay, hit your microphone with your He's hand. He's muted. With your hand. He's been because muting and see because turning himself on and off. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, wait a second. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah? Just that was you. I don't know. I give up. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I do a show here in which I get enough problems technically with my own feed <laughs> not having to worry yeah, about our eight too. others you know one guy's got his ceiling fan and you know, <laughs> one guy can't get the sound going so do you uh so, so ray what, dropped off did he yeah he left yeah, yeah. yeah boy uh <clears throat> boom 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 there we go Get rid of them there for the time. Now, what? Now, here, I wonder if um, anybody, and I don't know how everybody feels about the impeach or don't impeach question, but if today's testimony changed any minds about who's for impeachment and who's not. Well, I like peaches. 
Well, I've never, I, my mind. I've, I, well, I've never been for impeachment because I just feel it's, uh, if, especially if we do it right now, I mean, by the time we ever got around to impeaching him, uh, he either would be a term for another president or he wouldn't be president any longer. Um, I think it's a long, lengthy process that would only benefit him. It would benefit well, Trump. Trial is a long, lengthy you know. project. Process. Because Trump could then rally his people, and his people would go to the polls like crazy. You know, right now they're they've got uh, their fingers up. They're, they're already going to rallying. anyway. They're already gonna vote. They're gonna they're, yeah, they're getting they're, rallied. Yeah, they're, already, they're gonna vote anyway because they, you know, according to them, if a Democrat wins, it's like the end of the friggin' world. I gotta tell you well, something. You if, I, if I if I um. Uh, if I wasn't this age, if I was about 15 years younger, I'd leave this country right now. I would I get out. You'd of run here. for president. I'd get out of here. Yeah, no, I'd get out of here. This is where would you go? Uh, a number of places. A, a lot of fine countries out there. I like uh, Britain's nice, but I don't like the food, so I wouldn't go there. Well, uh, now they got Boris Johnson, so he's just I, as bad yeah, as Trump. Yeah, yeah I like. There. I'll tell you who I who I, I would probably I would love to go to Spain, live in Spain. They're f nice people. The country's pretty solid, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, I would, uh, but I any place but here. Let me put it that way. You know, this is this is an getting to be an ugly country. It's getting to be a Does very. Does Spain ugly have their problems? Basque separatists. No, that's been going. That's been going on for fifty years. Well, nobody's Phil. perfect. And, and then uh, in Barcelona, you know no. that uh, what's that area called? Uh, uh, the Rambles. The, the area around. No, no, no. The uh, the the countryside around Bar uh, Barcelona. It's it's an area of Spain that is wants to. They have their own language and they want to secede. You mean Catalonia? Catalonia, yeah, that's it. Catalonia, yeah. Well, they, they, they wanted, they've wanted to do that for years, and there's a good reason why, because they were, you, it has a history, okay? And, and part of the history is, is that as a region, uh, they were deprived of goods and services by the Franco regime because they hated them. Uh, and so it, when I first went to Barcelona and Franco was still alive, that, that city was... Uh, very gray, very sad, uh, fountains not working, things like that, you know, very poor city. And then I, when I went back for the Olympics, which was years later, I said, well, how good can Barcelona be? And it just, they had cleaned the whole thing up and it was, all the fountains were working and it was one of the most beautiful cities in the world and, and is to when this day. When did Gaudi die? Uh, did they restore all the Gaudi stuff or was it like that when Franco was alive? I think Gaudi died in the 40s, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, it, 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 they, didn't, they didn't restore anything of Gaudi's, actually. Because, because they, the mark that he left on that city is phenomenal. Well, a, a, a lot of people hated his stuff when it was first done uh, because yeah. it's very organic um, uh, structures. They almost look like skeletons, some of them, and bones, you know. Uh, that apartment building he designed, everything yeah, yeah, he did. No. Park, uh, I can't pronounce Park, Gael. Park Rule. Gael. Gael, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. you have the, you have the church. Uh, uh, Familiar. Which, w w uh, yeah, uh, which wasn't finished. Uh, and then they got a bunch of uh, modernists to go in there and finish it. So the front is like a modern version of what Gaudi might have had in mind, but the back, which he did, is just phenomenal. It's like, it looks like a dripping candle. I mean, yeah. it is just, it's amazing. It is just amazing. But anyway, I, 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 I always loved Spain, and I love the people in Spain, and the country is a pretty decent country. Um, uh, and, um, you know, uh, in fact, it was more decent than we are when Franco was there. So, you know, uh, I mean, I think, we are, I, I, I think we are so ugly now as a country that if I had the ability to leave here, but I'm too old for that, you know. Jeff, you know what I'm talking about. You, if you wanted to leave, you can't, you know. Cabinet Not challenge. Oh. How, why don't you book with your air miles and just go for a couple of weeks? Maybe it'll make you feel better. 
Because I can't, because who knows, I may have to have the radio, uh, the uh, the uh, chemotherapy or the radio, whatever. Or Nothing the... happens that fast with what you think you got. Nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you could take a year and uh, think about it. Just, you know, you're young enough, you can walk, you, your, your legs work, you, you know, and God, you know, Barcelona's a walking city. Go. Take. Take two weeks. My feet are Jack killing me, Michelle. I have I have numb feet. That's maybe if you moved around, it would help. But you know, but, you know, uh, in a couple more years, they're not going to just yeah, be numb. But if I if I do something like that, I'll use up all my money, and then I better die soon because I won't no, have anything to live use, on. Use air miles for hotel. Use air miles for airplane, and go first class, and uh, you know, do but, it right. But Marjorie can't go with me. When, because she has a job. Yeah, she doesn't get a vacation. Yeah, once a year. Okay, well, this is the time. You know. Well, you know, she's don't keep, wait. She keeps telling me we got to go somewhere, so uh, we will. But I, first, I have to have the cancer treatments and the. No, uh, you no, know. nah, nah, you can always put it off. Plus, you know what is medical is free over there. Just tell me you got cancer and you need treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I, you know, do what Jeff did in Australia. Do you yeah, ever hear from uh, Hajik at all? No, yeah. I haven't. No. I mean, we don't even know maybe, if he's alive maybe, anymore. Yeah, maybe it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder, because, you know, I heard about what you have, obviously, and, and uh, Phil yeah. had the same thing. Uh, well, not exactly the same thing. Does it give you cancer? Huh? It, yeah, it's the GabNet that does it. Yeah. Gab, gab net spread yeah. by gab Okay, net. Ray, oh. can you hear us now? Yeah, yes, I oh, can. Oh, good. That what what did you need, a new microphone or what? I, what did you say, Alex? I'm what, sorry. Uh, what was wrong with the microphone? Uh, I don't know. It's on my laptop. I don't know why it wasn't working. Yeah. So I just switched computers. Oh, okay. All right. I have to go figure it out later. Go figure it out later. <laughs> uh, uh, Josh, did you hear the hearings today? I saw a little bit here and there, yeah. What was Probably your the bullet points on the news? Yeah, what was your take? More what, what's your takeaway from it? Well, I think it was what we thought it would be. I mean, I thought it was a little, you know, I, it was a little shameful the way the Republicans tried to make him sound like he was some partisan hack. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't care for that. And you know, the only reason they're doing that is because he didn't say something they wanted to hear. I mean, I view the the Mueller report like, you know, people sometimes do judges, you know. The judge said something you didn't like, so he's a crooked activist judge, you know. I mean, that that's how I see that. I mean, you know, Phil is acting like he didn't read the report, you know, which I don't think is true. No, but he, he sounded if, if that. The, I'm, but I'm just saying, if, if, if Mueller today had gone in there and said... 100%. President's exonerated. Case closed. Everybody be like Robert Mueller. The greatest American. You know what? Let's take Washington off the quarter. Let's put fucking Robert Mueller on there. You know, and you know what? While we're at it, let's put him on the 1, the 5, the 10, the 20, and the 100. I mean, it, it's, a, it's an outcome-based thing about whether or not yeah. he did a good job or not. You know? Can't sometimes people just do their job and if you don't like it you can just say well you know he did his job i mean but fucking i think he, I hear, no. when he clarified what he said to the congressman lou and he uh he was in front of nadler and the first statement he made was uh, a correction of uh, what he had said to lou uh, did you hear that correction no yeah I, I did and he was lou was just trying to trip him up and he got him no, 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 no. Afterwards, uh, uh, he met, uh, there was a second uh, yeah. round of questioning, yeah. and uh, uh, Nadler ran, uh, or Ship, Ship ran the second round of uh, questioning, and when he got into that room, the first thing he did well, it wasn't a second was clarify round. It wasn't what he said a, it to, wasn't uh, a to it, it wasn't a second oh, oh. round of questioning, okay, it was but, a second hearing, so, Phil. Second hearing, yeah, it was, it was a different room. I guess I would say, you know, big deal in a way. I mean, so a person who had to sit at a big table deal. for six and a half hours no, no, and no, take no, rapid not, fire well, questions. Well, will, you let Josh, will, you let Josh, will you let Josh finish what he was saying, Phil? Yeah, but I, 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 Phil, I mean, I, I guess I'm just, I'm just saying 
if he made some sort of correction later, then he didn't try to hide anything, and he clarified what he wanted to say. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? No. And I mean, um, a person sits at a table for six or seven hours and takes rapid-fire question, and then, you know, it kind of is going back and forth and back and forth, and then he wanted to maybe clarify the record. Is fine, which, by the way, is the very same reason that everyone kept saying, oh, well, Trump shouldn't testify because they'll just put him across the table and they'll just be firing questions his at him. Answer, and they'll just try to trick him up. His clarification was a complete 180 uh, uh, to the question that Lou had uh, given him uh, because Lou was trying to make a, uh, a, a, a point of, um, not collusion, but obstruction. <laughs> and... Uh, and the answer or the clarification that he give, gave was a complete 180 of what he gave uh, Lou. So, uh, and the end result of that clarification was that he didn't obstruct. What? That's, no, that's, that's the important he part. Just, I don't know where you got that. I don't know where you heard that. I'm reading the I, article I, I, right I, I, now. I, 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 hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Phil. Shut up a second, Phil. Let's, somebody else is trying to say something. Will you let somebody else NBC try News and say website. something? It's on website. Yeah, yeah, and what I'm, does it I'm say? I'm looking at it right now. And what does it say? Uh, former special counsel Robert Mueller testified that he did not indict President Donald Trump on obstruction of justice charges because of Department of Justice guidelines. We know all that, right? But yeah. later well, clarified well, his let, remarks. But wait, later, wait, Phil. Let him finish, later, Phil. Can I finish? Yeah. Okay. The confusion came amid question, questioning from Democratic uh, Re Representative Ted Lieu of California. Uh, Lieu recounted the three elements needed for the crime of uh, obstruction. Um, okay, so here's the statement. I believe a reasonable person looking at the facts could conclude that all three elements of the crime of obstruction of justice have been met. And I'd like to ask you the reason, again, you did not indict Donald Trump uh, is because of the OLC opinion stating that you cannot indict a sitting president, correct? Lou said, that is correct, Mueller said. Yeah. Okay, former, uh, and then, um, then something came later, right? I'm trying to get to that part of the article. Uh, in, Mueller's, uh, in Mueller's opening statement that came later before the House of Intel Intelligence Committee, the right. former special counsel said he wanted to correct the record on his exchange with Lou. That's not the correct way to say it, Mueller said. We did not reach a determination as to whether the president committed a crime. That statement was more in line with his report. But, and with but, his yeah, but report. what he also said in the, in the report was that uh, this is not to be construed as saying that he didn't collude, or that he was right. So yeah. it was not a 180, Phil. But you're yes, because you're innocent until proven guilty. And and his initial yeah, thing yeah. was that he uh, did uh, use it the OLU uh, uh, memo, and now he's saying no, he didn't go by the OLU. He went by. That's not what he said at you all. You know something, Phil? Phil, 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 Phil you're like no, everybody. You're like mind. everybody I saw on TV today. That's not right, Phil. This is like a giant fucking Rorschach test in which everybody has an opinion of what the ink blot looks like. Right, well, and that's exactly what Trump did. In the, that's not said. On that's here. exactly said, what Trump was pulling up when he was yeah. in his in his uh, pose before he got on the helicopter. He was doing exactly what Phil was saying. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. make sense. He said all he did was switch the word crime, but he didn't say that. He didn't do it because of the OLC. He never said that. But Correct. originally, to, to to Congressman Lou, he did say that. I know, but in the second one, he didn't. When he right, made so third, this is what wait, I'm saying. Phil, fucking wait! God damn it! He didn't say <laughs> that he wasn't making the decision based on the OLC prior decision. He didn't negate that part. He switched the word crime in for the word obstruction. That's no, he, all. He, he didn't. He, uh, Fuck he said no, he couldn't no. find anything uh, that they couldn't prove that there was obstruction. How? No, how, he if didn't say that, Bill. He if after two that. and a half years you can't prove there was obstruction, you know, he how, never you, said what, he what the hell do you want from this guy? There was obstruction. He you never know, said that, Bill. Uh, well, I, I'm just, just saying I don't understand it. That's because 15 minutes ago. Well, I guess what I don't understand is 15 minutes ago, the report was a piece of shit. He didn't even read it. Now you're trying to use it to say he cleared my guy. He said I, he said Do you like the guy or do you not? 
I said Mueller sounded like he didn't read the report because when he was asked a question, he would say, well, I'm not sure. I don't oh. know. Where is that? Is that if I were report? 115 years old and had been putting up with this shit my entire life and had to testify before yeah, the biggest I, number of assholes ever too. gathered in one place, I would probably sound that way, too. Mueller has always been a strong uh, a litigator. He has always been uh, strong at his presentations in front of Congress. Phil, Today Phil, he was confused. Phil, Phil, and, Phil and I he, said something he, earlier that you didn't listen to or pay attention to. I don't think, think the man was well. No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. he was well. And so, my, and, my and I think I this. think we have to give him credit for showing up there, even when he wasn't feeling well, because he looked like the minute I saw him, I said that man is not well. Well. And, yeah. and the end result of his testimony was that he was weak. <laughs> and, and it could have been due to uh, illness, but the, uh, the bottom line is he, he was confused. Uh, he looked like he had had a stroke, you know? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, well, so th thank you for, for yeah, accusing yeah. him of all kinds of things and then saying, well, he had a, probably had a stroke. Good old video diagnosis. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you guys I'm, do it all the time. All I'm saying yeah. is he didn't look well. Public, he didn't. He did didn't look well, and uh, I think he was a little befuddled today because he was not fully of his presence of mind. I know what that feels like when you don't feel well, especially at our age. I don't know how old Mueller is. I think he's younger than I am, actually. Uh, he's in he's seven. Tired of all this shit. And he's tired of all this shit. Absolutely, he's tired of all this shit, Kevin. You know, there's no question in my mind about it, you know, so I, 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 don't, I guess I'm just saying that I read through if you read through the report the way Phil and some of his colleagues might. Uh, here's a part I really like. Robert Mueller. Thumbs up. Great guy. One of the best guys ever. Here's a part I don't like. Uh, you know what? This guy has got Ronald Reagan syndrome. He's out to lunch. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with this guy, but he looks like he's about to. He probably didn't even read this fucking thing. Oh, wait, I like this part. Robert Mueller. I didn't say I liked yeah. it. I was saying I mean, this just, is the reality is of what he said. <laughs> he talks just like Trump, doesn't he? He's 74. <laughs> and he's got a birthday coming up, August 7th. I mean, I just want to know which... That's why I said. I mean, it, this is activist judge syndrome. I mean, he said something you like. He's a good guy. He, I didn't say that. Like you were putting words he's, in my mouth, Josh. He's a bad guy. No, I'm, I'm just saying this is what people do in general with things. I... Yeah. I just say he did what he had to do. I mean, there is such a thing as just doing you know, your job. <laughs> I was just making a comment on the testimony and how uh, one bit of testimony was recanted uh, in the you next You know hearing. something, Phil? Phil, uh, you have spent about five minutes on the one thing that Mueller said over and over and over well, again. It may sound like that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, like no, hearing. no. I, I don't even know the exchange between Lou and so on. That's why I haven't gotten in the middle of it. But you won't let it go. You didn't just make the statement. That's the only thing you have against Mueller in this whole hearing. Oh, no. I, I made my comments about Mueller in the beginning, that uh, he, he didn't look, uh, no, he didn't look not, like that's he was not, at that, the top that, of that, his game. That's a, that's a, uh, a, a judgment call on, on uh, uh, appearance. Uh, what I'm talking about is this one thing that somehow you latched on to and you won't let it go. For the last That's five minutes, for the last five minutes, you have been just driving it into the ground. Well, it may sound like that to you, but I mentioned it once or twice. I got talked over about five times. No, because and, it will get used to it. Hey, the damn statement hey, I'm out, glad you like, I'm way. glad you, you, you got talked over. Now you know how it feels. Uh, that bullshit. You, you're the king of talking over. Hey, whose show is it? Oh, it's his show. Uh, hey, it's his glove, his bat, his ball. Yeah. 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 Look, when you throw that ball, it doesn't come back. You know? You, you, you got you to gotta throw the ball out to somebody and have them throw well, it back. All I know is that you just, you just belabored this thing for five minutes. Well, and no, it, no, it, it seems like to be it seems to to, No, it seems to be the only thing you could latch on in, what, five hours it's of the testimony? The only thing I said. It's the only thing I came I said today, other than you know making fun of Mueller for sounding like he had a stroke, you know, that's that was it. I I, I argued a point, and you didn't like the point because you 
you didn't get your scenario in there. And, what uh, scenario? So now, what now scenario? The, the I, I, I found the I found the whole hearing to be boring. Well, I found I, I, meant, I, I, I found that that it it just you know I'm so sick of things falling along party lines rather than that entire committee getting together and trying to get some answers out of Mueller and to hear things. Anytime you went to the Republicans, they were never ever asking questions. They were simply making statements. No, and that was the other way around. And and it was the Democrats that if you if you put a Democrat in front of the guy, the question was about obstruction. If you put a Republican, but they were in front asking the guy, questions. The Demo it, the Republicans, the Pfizer Republicans, Lawrence. Phil, the Republicans weren't asking questions. No, they were, the Republicans they were, were just making statements about no, they the Mueller to report. Know when he first knew that the Pfizer warrant wasn't any good, they asked about struck. They asked about uh, his other investigators. Come on, y you didn't. You didn't want to hear what those what the Republicans the Pfizer had to say. Ones were good. All yeah, the no, Pfizer Phil. I, 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 hey, I don't fucking. The, I hey, the, Phil. The, the Phil, Phil, listen to me. Dossier. Listen to me, Phil. I don't fucking give a shit. The okay, wait dossier, a minute. Let me finish. 90%. Let me finish. I don't give a shit. shit. This country is going to hell in a handbasket because of Trump and you people like you supporting him, and uh, quite frankly. Uh, I, I give up. I throw my hands up. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. There's well, nothing any of us up. can do about it. Uh, but I hope you're happy that this man has single-handedly taken what should be a pretty fine country and turned it into a, a, a shithole of, of a nation in the eyes of the rest of the world. I think he's improved our I don't give a shit, Phil. I don't give a shit, Phil. I don't give a shit, Phil. What? Because there was a black guy in charge. Yeah. No, because there was a Democrat in charge. <laughs> if you were a black you know, Republican, you know, look at most of the cities that are run by Democrats, and they all they're all shitholes. Whether it be Chicago, San Francisco, I'm was sorry, Michigan. Chicago was not a shithole. By the way, there Yeah. By the way, wait, hold on a second. I was talking to Larry Brown, and he had been in Chicago just a week ago, and said, "What a clean city that is." Yeah, because yeah. Wait, wait, Phil, 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 you don't have to reply to everything I say. Well, it's bullshit. It's the murder capital of America. You know, there's more murders there. There's more shootings. Chicago has has 150, 200 shootings in a weekend. Yeah, you telling me that's a great city? You're you got your head stuck in a hole. Huh? What would you say, Phil? Different parts of town. What did you say, Kevin? Kevin, you said something. Uh, well. He said That's something. And Kevin, did you say something? Shoot up a gun shop. Yeah, I was just kind of questioning that 150, 200 a weekend. No. Stat. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's a month. You know, they, they have more. Oh, 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 well, uh, they have out. more shootings in Chicago than anywhere else, and they don't even allow guns there. You know, uh, it's a shithole. Another shithole run by Democrats. You know. <laughs> Well, you, you go to San Francisco, you walk through dog poop and homeless. You go to Los Angeles, it's even worse than that. It's bad, yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, just curious. Curious. I'm just curious, but See, that's ridiculous. Uh, well, but I'm, I'm just curious. I say you got blinders on. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a, really a, a huge fan no, of this no. particular person, but how's come if uh, AOC, for example, were to go around and disparage parts of America. It's if you don't love it, leave it. But you know, you can do it. I mean, I, I, why is that? I don't understand. I didn't it sounds to me like there are a, a lot of places in America that you think are so terrible. I mean, why don't you leave? I mean, in, that's what I'm saying. This is what I don't like about today's political argument. I mean, you know, AOC says things are not so hot, and she should leave. You say it, and. It's okay. Trump made it the basis for him, his campaign, basically. I mean, his campaign was basically, his platform was that America is just fucking fucked up. It's terrible, and I'm the only guy who can fix it. I mean, this American carnage stops now? That's a line from his inauguration speech. 500 okay, murders so where was the, If you don't love it, leave it then, is what I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I'm not able to... Five, to 500 murders in Chicago. What was I that last weekend, Phil? Or what's that, that's, that's what's that got to do with what I just asked you? I mean... Well, because, <laughs> you know, if you don't like America... You, you can go somewhere else. Alex says, hey. You're the one I'm running it down, not me. I haven't said one disparaging thing about America all fucking night. Yeah, but the, but the group of four has. 
and they're anti-Semitic. So why do they have to leave, but not you? That's my question. I, because I like it here. I have, no pro- I have no problem with it. I, I think they like, like, oh, everybody I'm talks out of both sides like of their it fucking mouth. They ran for so, so wait a minute. Is it better? Is it better, Phil? Hey, is it better, Phil, to be anti-Semitic or to be racist? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, I would say, wait, which one's better? It, it's a it, coin toss. I was just gonna say that you might have to look with Phil. Well, you better hope for a two-sided coin. You got a president who's a racist. No, yeah, yeah, I think he might. No, that's, that's, that's your that's your media. Oh, he's a, no, it's not. It's my own he ears and eyes, Phil. And it's, it's, it's while those people the were list. chanting, send her back, send her back. And then he gets on wow. TV the next day and says, I didn't do that. But well, we all saw it. Oh, evidence on the video he tape. looked disgusted. Oh. He looked disgusted when they were doing that. No, he didn't, no, he didn't he Phil. In fact, he actually really nodded done. approval for a quick second. Now, he, he yes, no. I no. saw his face. Phil, I saw his face too, and he Me went. Too. And then no, he, he didn't go. Mm. Yes, he, he did. Yes, he did. Couldn't wait. For Phil, over. I wish I wish I had the footage. He here. looked self-satisfied while they well, were chanting. He's just masturbating. But uh, you know, uh, I I saw something totally different in. Uh, no, I think, I and think when Phil's he not the same the thing. He's just trying to cover. Nah. It, uh, let's see. I, I, I got. I went for a number of shootings in Chicago and gave me a number of murders. There's a lot more shootings than there are murders. By the way, do you know the uh, top uh, the top five cities in America with the highest murder rates in 2018? Give them to me. Uh, what would you say is here. number one? Which is number one? I would say Chicago. Try Elkhart, Chicago. Indiana. Indiana, they kill each other. Isn't that next yeah. door to Chicago? How about uh, no, number two? No. What's number two? Um, uh, I don't know. Tell me. San Bernardino, California. Yeah, they had a mass murder there. Number three is Chicago. Oh. All right. Well, it's in the top three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With a bullet, you know. Oh, <laughs> 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 Is that meant to be a joke? Uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know how they say in the survey, uh, yeah, it's not, number one with a bullet. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, I just think uh, we're, uh, we're up shit's creek. I really do. I think that uh, we have become morally just the worst kind of country. This is not the America that I was raised in or that I was told existed. Uh, I was maybe I was given a candy-coated version of America when I, I was growing Louis up. I thought St. Louis also was. What? I'm yeah. talking about something, Phil. Read the Louis. Yeah. See, you know what his problem is, Trump. Like when I watched the news today, the one thing, like he went on, he had like the way he was gloating. He can't just like not let the thing play out today. He always has to like be. He's very divisive, Phil. Like right? he can never like not stay out of the camera. What like if he's he just hitting back? Center stage today after this hearing. What if he's just hitting back? You know, you hit the guy. You know, the the Democrats were were oh, like bullies, oh, and they were able to hit Republicans left and right for the last thirty years, and nobody would hit back. Trump oh, says, oh. "You hit me, I'm going to hit you ten Man. times harder." Republicans have been the bullies the for the last thirty years. Yeah. Like, you know, because the, the poor Republicans, they wouldn't fight back. You know, Romney, oh, I won't lower yeah. myself. <laughs> or that other guy that just died, what's his name in Arizona? Think, I, I don't go I, uh, I don't go that low. The other guy uh, who died in Arizona, John you mean McCain. the American hero, John McCain? Yeah. You John mean the McCain, person who right. put himself out for this country? And what, the fuck, would, and what the fuck have you ever done? You know, in his later years, he was a bad Republican. He was a war hero, but a bad Republican. You just, you just uh, named your party's last two nominees for president of the United yeah, States. Right. And and because when they, I mean, when they would be attacked, when they get attacked, they wouldn't fight back. Trump fights back. Right. Just like me. Trump's, no, a, Trump's, a, Trump's, Trump's a fucking bully, Phil. Yes, He's a bully. If, uh, if Trump was, an, if, if Obama was an Arab, uh, McCain stopped him. Republicans don't like that. Republicans don't like that. 
being nice because uh, McCain was fair and he was a pretty fair-minded guy. They're all fair-minded. And uh, look at it. Look what it got him. It got him Obama. So you know, Trump well, stands up to these guys because we got Obama. Obama had eight great years. So anyway, I wish I we had about you know, it wasn't my eight great years. It was malaise. Malaise. Wow. Now, okay, well, here's what I live in the middle of uh, the Rust Belt, Middletown, Ohio. And uh, we uh, it's an old uh, half-dead uh, steel town. And the people around here are the Trump fans, are the religious, born-again, Protestant, Pentecostal fanatics. And it just amazes me how these people, the evangelicals, have sold their fucking soul down the river for this fucking Trump. Wait I a minute. Mean, Hallelujah. Very sad. <laughs> I mean, they'll talk about Jesus out of one side of their mouth and then Trump out of the other side of their mouth. And they call Obama the Antichrist. And they, you know. They're right. There, well, there was a, uh, there was, there was a meme that a, a friend of mine posted uh, on Facebook, and and I, you know, the people I went to high school with, most of them are friggin' Trumpites, and uh, she has this thing. It said, "Obama, a picture of Trump and Jesus is like Trump invited me back." It was like it was Trump and Jesus. It's oh, like the, the second what coming. What the hell kind of? I mean, the religious people around here have just sold their soul straight to the devil. How do you have a picture of Jesus grabbing pussy? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, yeah, exactly. Probably on The Apprentice. As you can get right there. He was on Celebrity Apprentice. So, you know, there's a lot of women around. I don't know. That just don't sound right to me. It's not the the most ranked thing you can think of. But it's wrong. But there it is, right there. So because Trump associated with Jesus in in Ohio, he now stands Jesus up there, is grabbing he pussy. Talks, he talks about Jesus, and then he grabs pussy, and then everybody stands up there and goes, well, "Yeah." Trump, in fairness, Trump doesn't really talk about Jesus. The Christians, they put. Oh, he eggs them on. Uh, okay, him, sorry. He talks so about how. Not. Well, yeah, let's, be, let's, 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 let, let's be. Let's be. Let's be. Trump is fucking Christ. Let's be honest about something. Uh, <laughs> Trump really isn't a religious person. He is not. <laughs> no. He acts like he is, and he acts like he backs them, and that he props them up, and he takes their money. But well, if he's a he Christian, not. he's not acting he, like it. No, I'll keep know. walking to church and, see the, and say, no. "Who's the guy in the crucifix?" I don't know who that is. Yeah, he probably walks in the church and goes, "Where the fuck?" Which is reminds this? me of Where a great. Which, well, reminds, me, which reminds me. Which reminds me. Which reminds me of a great <laughs> joke. Uh, it's the great, uh, one of the greatest show business jokes of all time. A father is is in vaudeville, and his kid is travels with him wherever he goes, and finally he decides maybe the kid should find out something about religion. And I should take him to church one Sunday. So one Sunday, he takes him to a church. And uh, the kid sees Christ up on the uh, cross, you know, with yeah. his arms like that. And the kid says, look, Dad. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> then grabs the basket on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. You know, it's just holy water. And when I watched this whole thing today, and I think you'll agree with me, Josh, I was so disgusted by just both sides just not getting together and saying, we're holding a hearing here to try and find stuff out. Let's just find stuff out. Everybody had an agenda in there, and uh, they weren't there to, to, to hear this guy. They were there to either nail him or to try and get something out of him that would nail the president. And yeah. I, I just felt that the whole the whole hearing was useless. Just useless. Well, so it was basically, 
I mean, it was basically the. You know, you can't. I can't. Everyone you can't say agreed. anything around here without Phil making some snide side <laughs> comments. No, Mueller thought it was useless too because he said he didn't want to testify, and he and and he said he was only going to talk about what was in the uh, report, and uh, so basically the hearing was useless. If you don't like what I have to say, just tell me. I, I don't have to call. You just tell me. I didn't say that, Phil. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, is that every <laughs> time I say something, you go, "Oh, well, that's the Democrats." Uh, no, as, I just. You gotta have a comment for everything. Mueller Mueller said that he didn't need to testify. It's all in the report. That's correct. And and, And and I think pretty much that's what he did today is he he simply stated what he already had stated in the report, which how could he state those things, Phil, if he'd never read the report? Come on, I was being facetious. You know, I, I made it uh, in that uh, what was happening was is he was asking, well, where is that? Is that in the report? You know, because he was having a, a weak moment uh, during these hearings. And uh, whether and it sounded like he didn't read the report. I know he read the report. Come on. You know, you guys are too fucking serious. You stop. Why? Being Why is it you're too fucking serious about that when you say it? And then later on, in order to get away with what you said, you said I was only kidding. I wasn't kidding. I said he looked weak. He looked. He looked out of sorts. He looked dazed. And I confused. said. I said that at the very beginning. And and it yeah. sounded like so. So I agreed with you. But it sounded like he didn't read the report based on his answers. Oh. Now, if you don't like that, uh, I think that was very descriptive. But every time I have a comment that's a reasonable comment, like, hey, Mueller did not want to be there, you think I'm talking about something else. I mean, maybe maybe your Xanax is, is, is still hitting you. You know, I, I don't I don't understand no, why make, every time make I a make fun, a comment, little, little you, you got dr- a hit, I guess. A little fu- a drug joke about me. Thank yeah. you, Phil. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I mean, look, it was a, uh, it was what most congressional hearings are. I mean, they're almost all just shows. That's the I mean, grandstanding. Well, let me. I, 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 I think. Uh, I think, Josh, what, um, yeah. what, we are in at this present time, is that the whole the whole mess, all of Washington, all of politics, all of of human behavior in this country has turned into one giant reality show yeah. and, and and if it isn't a, isn't a reality show then it's a game show and today what we witnessed was I guess a game show you that's know because you didn't get what you wanted Phil I'm and, that's you know, that has nothing to do gun. you're not listening to what I'm saying Phil you started, no you're not listening to what show. I'm saying I'm saying that all America has turned into this giant reality show courtesy of a reality show host Okay. okay, it had nothing to do with how that turned out today. I just said that everything that we have, whether it's this or whether it was the hearings of the Supreme Court justice or whatever, are all run like they're fucking game shows. Yeah, we're, we're trending that way for the last, you know, some odd years, and I, there's Ever there's since nothing. Anita Hill. It's not it's not slowing down. You know, Ever that's what Anita worries Hill. me. Well, okay, maybe that is when it started. I don't know, but I mean, it certainly is, you know, trending that way, and it's not slowing down, and you know, that's disturbing. What? And, and what what's happening the entire time that all this kind of stuff is going on is that these sideshows and circus acts have slowly and slowly allowed the executive in this country to become more and more powerful. And you know, Republicans used to agree with me on that, yeah. but. At the current time, they're having, you know, temporary memory loss on that because, you know, they need to right now because it's very convenient. I I suspect that in a few years that will wear off and they'll be back where they used to be. Gosh, they used to be able to work across the aisle, and you can't do that anymore. Now it's just party party line. You know, there's there's no working across the aisle. There's no tip on meals. Who's disputing that, you, you know, for the most part, but... Well, wait a minute, Charlie. Uh, had, Charlie, uh, well, Char- Char- certainly not the uh, remedy for that condition. Charlie had a question. Is Charlie? Yeah, I said, who do you think started not being able to work across the aisle? Doesn't matter. Doesn't it, it's the reality of what we have now. It's it's what we have now. It doesn't matter who started it. it it's the way it is, and it's not good. And and in 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 respect to what Josh said. 
the reason that we that they have assumed more power is because the other uh, parts of government aren't talking to each other. You know, oh, right? I mean, I mean, there, there, there's been a long train coming on on how the executive in this country got to be as as powerful as they are. I'm just saying there are some dangerous things that I see. You know, I I read a quote today from, you know, Donald Trump that said. You know, and I'm going to have to paraphrase the quote. I, I can probably find it, but I mean, I'm pretty close on the wording here. Is and and the quote began with, and then we have this article too, which allows me to do whatever I want. And right. and that was the quote. And I mean, I Republican, Democrat, uh, Trump, time, Obama, right. George. Bush, that's a dangerous quote. I mean, because it, it that's existed not before true. Trump. It existed before Trump. Article, article two. two. Is not I, I have obviously talked about that for quite a long time, and I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm saying he's he's not doing anything to slow it down by any means. He's jumped in the driver's seat and he's full speed ahead, and I get disturbed from that perspective because, you know, Republicans used to agree on that, and they are just in this, you know, phase of temporary memory loss because they well, they have some power there. and they want to keep it. That's and why I they like didn't want the 60 votes like in the Senate. That, that's sorry, why the 60, the 60 votes in the Senate, when they could, uh, 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 for the Supreme Court judge, they could do it with a majority. Uh, they, they didn't want to go. They didn't want to go to that. What do they call it? The nuclear option. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay. you know, and that is another thing that eroded, uh, you know, or or gave more power to the executive right. branch. Yes, one of the largest. Uh, reasons for executive growth in power has been abdication by the other two branches. Yes, there's there's no doubt. I mean, they have voluntarily given much of it away. Absolutely, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know that you can bl bl blame the executive branch for what the other two branches have done. It's well, I'm not, reaping I didn't the say rewards. I was. Well, I'm not. I'm not blaming them. I'm. But I'm saying the current person in power. Has made some comments that are over and above in, in disturbance to me. What others have done in the past. I mean, we we've had this problem for a long time. I guess what I'm saying is, is if we were, you know, and you can see me because we're on camera. If we were on a, a a line graph here, it used to go like this, and then Donald Trump it went. <laughs> I mean, and and I think if he were a member of the other party, the people in your party would be drastically disturbed by that and oh, he's singing it Josh do you think way. that that's because he's more transparent and you're seeing and he's saying what he's doing and the other ones kept their mouths shut and didn't say anything but did the same thing anyway no I, I think it's just because they're hypocritical human beings who have basically you know been corrupted by their own power I mean you know this is the way listen, it's been since are, uh, yes. the beginning of time well I would probably also agree. It's just agree that Trump has got a big mouth, and he and he says what he's doing, um, and and he and he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and uh, you know he's transparent. Well, I he wish he, I wish I wish he'd fucking shut up and do his job. Aaron. Okay, he, he I wish he'd just shut up for one moment, not stop and talk to the press when he's going to the helicopter. Just shut the fuck up and work. Well, it would be your enough. mic's off. Uh, my mic isn't off. Oh, now it's on. Oh, no, you it, were just moving your mouth then, and it wasn't. It was on all the time, Phil. Oh. I heard him. Oh, okay. I didn't hear the last couple of, uh, words. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, I and Phil will have, probably have to admit I have at least tried very, very hard to not criticize Donald Trump for his style of how he runs his presidency, even though I don't like it. I've tried to make it very substantive things like what I was just talking about. You know, even though the style that he chooses, I, I find also disturbing. But, you know, I find each, it repugnant. Each, yeah. You know, each each president is certainly allowed his own, you know, way of thinking. You know, I mean, but I do, however, think, you know, look, I, I'm disturbed by the fact that, you know, today, for example, he basically, you know, called in sick to work as the report and, you know, sat on the couch and watched this crap on TV all day. I mean, it's like. I just find that, you know, ridiculous. But, I, I mean, you know, I, I just, I don't understand how we got here. And I don't know where we go from here. Because I just, I just think that if, you know, 
Obama had sat in the on the couch all day and and watched you know TV programming and 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 typed into his phone all day you know live tweeting the fucking thing like oh. it's a ball game you know you he's losing their fucking minds. We call for impeachment it's, hearings. Right, and now it's kind of the new normal, and I mean we'll get away from it eventually. It just we gotta get through it, I guess. And they are calling for impeachment hearings. That's what they want. That's what this whole Mueller thing was about today. They wanted a smoking gun so they could have an impeachment, but they're saying, hey, we'll have an impeachment anyway. It doesn't matter whether he was right or wrong. Well, I, I have no idea if they're going to try and do an impeachment, but actually today made me think um, I was kind of on the fence about impeachment. I still kind of am, but I'm a little bit more now. It's like, let's just get through this. And indict him and lock him up when they get out of office. Ninety-one of your Democratic brothers in Congress want impeachment. Right. Yeah. Well, and, but you know, to be fair, we'll as I we'll to be work. fair, as no. I've tried to call for you to do and others, you know, I'm, I'm not. I don't really support them on that. I mean, you know, and and I've had conversations with others, uh, you know, with Bishop afterwards and whatever. I. I don't like some of the tactics they're using to try and obtain tax returns, et cetera. I don't like some of these, you know, underhanded loopholes and things. They're, you know, it's like some of this is just it's uh, it's not right. I'm not happy with the way the parties behaved, you know, either. But I mean, but I'm willing to say that, you know. I mean, the, the, I just wish Republicans could just do a little bit more of that. Gosh, of what did I say about Trump's uh, demeanor? I said it was repugnant. Uh, you know. Well, I'm not. I mean, right. I'm not accusing you of anything specific there. I'm. I, just I like what he's a, doing, but I don't like general, his general. Yeah, you know. I'm just saying, as a general rule, with where we're at as a country, you know, it's it's just, you know, it's just the way it is. I mean, I read an article today about you know uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, you know, blocking people on Twitter, you know, because they're constantly getting after her. And I'm reading the article, thinking exactly what many people were commenting. Well. Donald Trump, Trump just did. got sued for that. Yeah, you know, and I, she shouldn't do that. I wish, I wish that they wouldn't. Uh, Democrats don't do themselves any damn favors when they act like that. You know, and it's 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 not healthy for them. And it, it's why I'm a pretty I, firm I, believer. Trump. I know it's a, I know it's illegal because Trump is a public figure and he's not supposed to block people. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't see why he can't have a Twitter account that he can block people. You uh, know, right? But yeah. you know. I know it's not legal, but I don't think it's right. Huh? Hmm. I, I wish I could just have a, a little button I could push and just block Trump out completely from my life. <laughs> you know? So every time he comes on television, it just doesn't show up. You know? And then I could just, uh, I could just have nothing to do with the man because he's a total immoral fuck. Yeah. That That's called the off button. Huh? Yes, yes, uh, Dan. We're gonna, you're going to get, well, get the final word in. Uh, I kind because when when Trump became president, you kind of said you wanted to get away from Trump and everything having to do with Trump. <laughs> so I've been doing that, and unfortunately, that's why I hadn't listened to your show in a while. <laughs> so you got kind of wrapped up in your own suggestion, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I, start, now, I started watching it, after a while because I realized you couldn't do a show like this every night and not do that. You exactly. Know? And, yeah, exactly. And, 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 it's, and it's, I tell you, but I, I'm fight. just fed up with all those news channels. And uh, I was yeah. I watched Mueller for like 15 minutes today and then, you know, turned it off because... It just didn't I, seem I didn't seem interesting to me at all, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's our uh, the, uh, lovely and attractive theme song. I will go back now to being depressed, but thank you for taking my mind off things for an hour and a half. Uh, uh, Josh Wheeler, thank you. Always a pleasure to have you here. Phil, nice to have you here. Did I say that? Jeff, <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, 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 hey, uh, Charlie. Always fine to have you here, uh, Dan. Glad you're back with us again. You're you you're a good participant, and of course uh, Tony. Go, right. go take care of your mother now. 
and Kevin, so thank nice. you as well. Uh, that's our citizen panel. And if all of you would give a big wave goodbye, I'll wave back at you. And so will the audience. Okay, there we go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me hang up on them unceremoniously so we can make the, uh, the, uh, phone, the uh, uh, Skype lines ready for Jack Bishop, who's next up on this GabNet uh, station. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, there's no uh, Damien again this week, and not again next week either until Friday. So uh, all I have to say to you is we'll see you again tomorrow night after a rerun of Damien uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.